Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, my dear students. Now we move on to the oral cavity. We have finished in the last previous lecture the oral cavity along with the types of glands, both endocrine and exocrine gland. Now in this lecture we will further have a discussion about the various transitions of the epithelium in the oral cavity. Now in this diagram we see there are three structures visible that is the lips, lips then the hard palate then the soft palate. Now over here in the, in the previous slide I have discussed with the lips histology. The lips have two surfaces one facing toward the uh, oral cavity other is the skin so the epithelium will be changed at the level where the epithelium become stratified squamous non keratinized at that of the oral cavity whereas on the, uh, the anterior or external side you have a skin so the epithelium will be stratified squamous keratinized with the hair follicles and spacious and sweat gland as well now inside the oral cavity you have a hard palate the hard palate has two surfaces one toward the nasal cavity and other toward the oral cavity the epithelium is definitely it is changed pattern that is the from the nasal cavity it is the pseudo stratified columnociliated that is the nasal mucosa the typical epithelium pseudo stratified columnociliated toward the nasal side from where it forms the floor of the nasal cavity then is the from oral side the oral mucosa it is the stratified squamous and non keratinized epithelium that is the oral cavity proper in between the hard palate you see a spongy bone which form the which is formed by the maxilla and the palatine bone so these are the spongy network of bone sandwich between the double epithelium nasal epithelium and the mucosal oral cavity epithelium the salt palate is made up of again the muscle the muscles are of skeleton and type these muscles are sandwiched between the double epithelium toward the nasal cavity and that is the oral cavity so nasal cavity is pseudo stratified cylindrical columnar whereas and toward the uh, Oral mucosa, it is stratified squamous, non keratinized epithelium. No invariable amount of salivary gland scattered groups are also visible in the SNI of the mucous glands, are also visible in the double layer of the uh, this hard palate as well as the short palate. The rest is the lamina propria, same connective tissue element, but short palate muscle in between and these muscles are skeletal wherein the hard palate whereas the in the hard palate you see a spongy network of bone spongy network of bone so all these transition you see in this slide the lips hard palate and the short palate you know, oral you know, cavity histology oral mucosa you now look at the picture you now this is the epithelium stratified squamous non keratinal epithelium wedge form that it penetrate into the lamina propria this is the lamina propria this is the wedge formation that the uh, movements of the epithelium toward the lamina propria so lamina propria is again having rich connective tissue which are loose areolar but many many uh, macrophages lymphocytes as well as all the others front tissue fibers and cells but these are the glands these are the mucus glands so look at, look at the picture so these glands are scattered in the form of groups so these groups are also located within the oral mucosa all cavity lamina propria is rich with macrophages and blood vessel connective tissue elements all the features beneath is the these are the oral cavity muscles which are the arbuclerus oris these muscles are skeletal in type so look at the picture in this diagram so these are skeletal muscle nuclei at the periphery 
is the cross striation is also visible. So this is the typical picture of a oral cavity histology. Epithelium, then lamina propria, gland and muscle. All the four layers are visible in invariable amount as discussed in the introduction of the GIT. Again, there is a slide of hard and soft palate. Now, this is the oral epithelium from inward, certified squamous non cretinoid. Now, these are the salivary glands. Look at the groups of the mucus acinized, spongy network of bone. Then, is the lamina propria of the nasal side. This is the pseudo stratified plumnal ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. So this is a characteristic feature of a respiratory epithelium you see in the nasal side. This is the nasal side, this is the oral side of the hard palate. Look at the picture, spongy bones in between, then the muscle layers in variable amount, then is the glands of the oral side of the lamina propria. The epithelium is again is the certified squamous non retinoid epithelium. Now this is the short palate. Look at the picture. So this is the oral site and and this is the and uh, this is the toward the this is toward the and uh, this is toward the nasal side. So this is the nasal epithelium look at this is pseudo stratified columnar epithelium pseudo stratified columnar epithelium is again in the nasal epithelium desperately epithelium lamina propria and look at the picture that is the muscle layer the muscle layer is typical that is the this one is the skeletal muscle these are the short palate muscle which are skeletal so these skeletal muscles have I a mean, typical histology, the peripheral nuclei, and then is the cross striation along with the nuclei present in the periphery. And this is the palatine glands. These palatine glands are oral cavity gland, that is the some uh, lamina propria gland, this is a salivary in type. So this is the typical picture of a short palate. But difference is soft and hard palate, the presence of the spongy bone network. Epithelium is double in both sides, soft and hard palate. The soft palate and the hard palate. Soft palate having a muscle layer, typically invested muscle layer which are skeletal in type. So you will have to memorize the difference of the hard and soft palate. Now this is the description of the hard and soft palate. So nasal side and the oral side squamous and hard epithelium pseudo stratified nasal side. Lamina propria muscles are striated, salivary gland mostly mucus, bone tissue and hard palate epithelium is conified. Now the epithelium on the hard palate is conified because there is a constant friction. Epithelium conified hogi jahampe usko friction constant paregi usuradmevo conified ho jayegi to hot pele ke jo nasal uh, oral cavity ke epithelium will be conified okay, because of the constant rubbish and constant friction of the incoming food particles so these all layers are visible in the heart and short pele now what about the clinical aspects of the oral cavity up till now no histological feature of the mucosal dysplasia now, previously in all the slides, you have seen the normal pattern of a epithelium in the oral cavity and the nasal side are toward the uh, oral cavity side. Now, keratinization is a constant feature of the epithelium in the skin as well as in the in the oral cavity. Now, because uh, the keratinization is a constant feature of the heart palate because of the friction. When this uh, keratinization become leukoplakia and erythroplakia are the terms which are used due to hyperkeratosis, mean the hyperkeratinization of the keratin layer. So this is again a whitish parts appear in the hard palate. And in somewhere where there is the 
uh, this scrutinization. So leukoplakia, the preconscious condition, there is the modification or preconscious condition of the formation of keratin layer, more prominent is leukoplakia. Erythroplakia is the reddish appearance of the keratinization of the keratin layer. So it is not the precancers, but it is a mostly inflammatory. So erythroplakia and leukoplakia, and these two features are most commonly you see in the cigarette smokers and beetle and pan intaker. Jo pan khate hain ya cigarette smoker hain, they are more prone to develop leukoplakia and erythroplakia. Leukoplakia is more dangerous as compared to the erythroplakia. What do you mean by dysplasia? Dysplasia is the altogether change in the epithelium, normal pattern. At stratum basale and the lower layers, there is a pattern change because the cuboidal epithelium or polyhedral, they become schemal, they become tall, they altogether change. But if they remain intact, so it is dysplastic change. It is not cancerous, but they are strongly precancerous. So the main in the basal membrane, so it is definitely within this no invasion of connective tissue lamina propria, so it is a dysplastic change. What are the precancerous? I mean, when the epithelium change altogether and it becomes malignant type, so it will invade the basal membrane and tear up. It becomes uh, anaplastic, that the change are anaplastic, the nuclei become more deeply stained, the uh, chromosome become prominent, so there is a a large number of cell divisions seen in the a dysplastic chain, so it is the precancerous carcinoma in situ. Carcinoma in situ means that the carcinoma is developing but remain within the confinement of the basal membrane. The Pravarega, it is a carcinoma in situ. When it becomes invasive, moved toward the side of the side of the tissue in the lamina propria or it penetrate deep into the basal membrane to the surrounding tissues become the precancer, become the cancerous in nature. Now, squamous cell carcinoma is fairly common, common in the carcinoma OSCC, smoking, then beetle, alcohol, papillovirus, chronic ulcer, leukoplakia for three weeks are the common causes of squamous cell carcinoma. It is usually seen in the tongue, in the oral cavity, in the heart palate, from where first the virus attack, the beetle smokers, then the chronic ulcers, these all may lead to this form of the, but mostly it is prominent, that is smokers. Smokers are the more prominent to develop the squamous cell carcinoma. Thank you very much. Next we move on to the tongue in the next lecture.